on June. There we go. So please click accept, got it, whatever Zoom, Zoom is showing you all so that you all can continue joining us for this webinar. Uh, so again, thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Tracy Nguyen and I'm the training manager at the California School-Based Health Alliance. Welcome to our Smart Talk Cannabis Awareness and Prevention Training webinar. We're so excited that you all are here with us today. Uh, to get us started, I want to make sure we are acknowledging our funders. So we gratefully acknowledge the support of the California Department of Education Tobacco Use uh, Prevention Education Program for this project. Uh, the contents do not necessarily reflect the position or policy of the CDE. Next, I want to make sure we're going to go over some general housekeeping. This webinar, again, is being uh, recorded, and the recording and slides will be posted on our website in the next couple of days. It will also be emailed out to our entire list of registrants for those who couldn't join us for today. Um, our general ask is that you put the questions in the Zoom group chat, and then our presenters will take slide-specific questions throughout the webinar. Uh, but for more general questions, they will be answered towards the end of the webinar. Again, feel free to put your questions inside the group chat. For those of you who may not know about the California School-Based Health Alliance, otherwise abbreviated as CSHA, we are a statewide nonprofit organization dedicated to improving the health and academic success of children and youth by advancing health services in schools. And our work is based on two basic concepts. First, healthcare should be accessible and where kids are. And the second one is school should have the services needed to ensure that poor health is not a barrier to learning. And we do this through three main ways. First is capacity building, second, technical assistance, and then third, providing workshops and webinars like we are doing today. And there's the link uh, for you to uh, find recording sites and any additional resources um, that you might be interested in looking for. I'm gonna go ahead and drop some links inside the chat as well. Let me just give me a moment to do this. Here we go. Okay. So there's a link to our website and our webinar webpage as well. All right. Up next, I also want to um, share with you all our Save the Date flyer for CSHA's annual conference on April 29th uh, to April 30th of next year. It will be held at the Santa Clara Convention Center. Um, we're really excited about it. We hope you all are as well. Um, we are excited that it's going to be a two-day conference, so hopefully y'all are able to join us. Um, once registration is out, I can definitely send uh, forward that information or just keep on the lookout on our website. Uh, but for now, just save the date on your calendars, folks. And then uh, just a little bit about our membership. Uh, if you become a member of our organization, you will get conference registration discount. Um, you'll also get access to member only tools and resources, as well as us providing you all with technical assistance tailored to your organizational needs. Um, so if you haven't renewed your membership yet, we ask you to please do so. We are excited to have you back. And if you never become, uh, if you were never a member, we, uh, we hope that you are able to. Uh, become a member of our organization. And then I can drop that link as well into the chat if this is something of interest to you all. There we go. Okay. And so um, I want to make sure we are introducing our presenters for today. So before we dive into the Stanford's Reach Lab Smart Talk Cannabis Awareness and Prevention Toolkit, I want to introduce first Carly. Uh, Carly Noelani uh, Kajiwara was born and raised in Moana Lua, Oahu. She has a background in psychology and law. Currently, she is the education coordinator in Stanford's Reach Lab, where she helps to develop curriculum, assist with research, and conducts trainings. In her free time, Carly enjoys surfing, traveling, working on new crafts, and going on adventures with her dogs. And then also here with us, uh, which for some reason I can't see, um, Carly, maybe you know um, where Scott is. Maybe my camera is just not showing where he is, if he is here. Um, but I'm going to assume that he is here. Uh, but Scott... Um, we also have Scott here with us today. So for 30 plus year, Mr. Gerbert has been an educator, a student services coordinator in the San Ramon Valley Unified School District in California, serving over 34,000 students and a director of the Alameda County Office of Education, leading schools, districts, and countywide uh, programs around tobacco and cannabis prevention. 
uh, along with other health and wellness topics. He has been a certified uh, classroom teacher, both elementary and secondary levels, and has been involved in tobacco prevention efforts in California since 1997. He joined the team at Stanford's Reach Lab in 2022, working to find additional ways to empower and educate communities to combat the triangulum of tobacco, vaping, and cannabis, along with other health disparities and health inequities. His work centers around improving health and wellness literacy and lifting up youth voice and let me move this a little bit, use voice and agency while decreasing health disparities and health inequities. But with that, I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to you, Carly. Great. Thank you, Tracy. And thank you for the great introduction. Um, I don't no, Scott is here yet. He might be running a little bit late, but he might pop in a little bit later. Um, but hi, everyone. Good morning. It's nice to see you all here today. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and share my screen. All right. You can see that. Looks good. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Um, so as Tracy was saying, um, my name is Carly. I am from the Sanford Reach Lab, and uh, we do curriculum for prevention uh, for tobacco and cannabis use. But today we'll be talking about our Smart Talk curriculum, cannabis prevention and awareness curriculum. Uh, so throughout the whole presentation, please feel free to, you know, put things in the chat, raise your hand. If it's like a technical thing, definitely let me know. Um, but if it's like a general larger question, like, you know, how do I make a Canva account or what are the other curriculums that you offer? Um, please save those for the end as well. Okay, so um, to begin, we do ask that you take this pre-training survey for us. It really just helps us, um, you know, keep track of who's coming to these trainings. If you're finding it useful, um, you can scan the QR code there, or I just put the link into the chat so you can click on that as well. It should only take a few minutes, maybe three minutes, um, three to four minutes max, uh, but we'll take a few moments to do that and then we'll continue. All right. And as you're finishing up, feel free to um, put a thumbs up in your Zoom box or you can write in the chat, um, finished, done, thumbs up, just so I know where everyone is at. Okay, great. I see a few thumbs up, thumbs up. Awesome. Okay, thank you so much. So I'm just going to go ahead and move on. If you are still working on filling out the survey, please feel free to continue. We're just going to do some brief introduction stuff, um, but otherwise we'll, um, we'll move on. Thank you. 
All right. So I did want to introduce uh, Dr. Bonnie Halpern Felsher. She is our PI, our professor, the toolkit founder, and our Reach Lab director. She is a developmental psychologist uh, by training, and she is amazing. She does a lot of research. She has a great background, you know, in um, adolescent risk taking and adolescent development. So if you have any questions regarding her research, the curriculum, or anything at all, you can email her at bonnieh at stanford.edu. And um, I'll also have a slide at the very end of the presentation with all of these um, emails. So uh, you'll also have a QR code there at the end if you would like to reach out. Um, but that's her email. And then, hi there, I introduced myself uh, a little bit and then Tracy introduced me as well, but uh, my name is Carly. I'm the education coordinator within the lab, so that means I work on curriculum content as well as doing trainings like this, a little bit of research. Um, and some other things within the lab as well. If you have questions regarding anything at all, you can email me at my middle name, which is noelani at stanford.edu. And again, uh, it'll be included in the contact uh, page at the end of the presentation. All right, so the goals of our training today are to take an interactive deep dive into our new or updated Smart Talk Cannabis Prevention and Awareness Curriculum. This is a chance for you to become familiar with the material, uh, to collaborate with other educators, so everyone on this call here, and then to go over any questions that you may have. This is our brief agenda. Uh, we just took five minutes for the arrival, pre-survey, opening and intros. Then we'll do an introduction of the curriculum background about our lab and what we do and then how the curriculum is made. Then I'll take you on a brief overview of the curriculum, including you know a website walkthrough. And then at the end, we have uh, a brief activity, uh, which is a chance basically for you to get into the website, um, download the slides, you know, and preview everything as well. And then the last 10 minutes are devoted to that post survey, closing and any questions you may have. Okay, so to continue with introductions, this is our curriculum team, uh, the team responsible for bringing you uh, these updates to the curriculum, as well as creating the activities, um, and things like that. Uh, we have myself and Bonnie here, as well as Marsha Zaria, who is our Director of Positive Youth Development, and Marina Green, who is our Director of Curriculum Development. And we are just small pieces of a much larger puzzle. Uh, this is our entire lab. We are fairly large for a lab, um, but we have you know, a lot of people here from uh, researchers to postdocs to uh, medical doctors. We have our wonderful graphic designer, as well as um, uh, even a lawyer here as well. Um, uh, I have a circle going around Scott there, who is our director of outreach and strategic partnerships. He is a great contact uh, in general for our lab. If you want to collaborate, uh, he's super friendly and amazing, and he might be popping in sometime. But I'm going to put his email on the chat because uh, it's just great to have. But uh, he is a great resource. And then I also wanted to introduce our Stanford Reach Youth Action Board. So when we say our curriculum is made for youth by youth, this is what we mean. Um, every year we have a new youth action board and it's comprised of mostly high school and some early college age students, usually before the ages of um, 21. Uh, we have a new cohort every year. And I believe this year we have 35 YAB students and they are just amazing. They let us know what's going on in their communities, uh, what their friends are using, what their peers are using. Um, and they have a wide range of experience themselves. So uh, they have from no experience to maybe friends or family who've struggled to they themselves struggle with addiction to either nicotine and or cannabis. Um, so they create content for us and they just advise us and they're really amazing. If you know of any students uh, that are interested, this year's cohort has already been picked, but next year uh, we do applications over the summer. So um, please feel free to send some wonderful students our way. And then as always, we'd like to give a special thanks to our sponsors for allowing us to keep these trainings free and supporting our research and community goals. Okay, so now a little bit more about our lab. Uh, REACH stands for Research and Education to Empower Adolescents and Young Adults to Choose Health. Uh, it's a little bit long, um, but we thought REACH was appropriate. And uh, our mission is to empower and promote adolescent and young adult health through collaborative research, education, and policy. So we have you know, a few different branches of our lab, um, but this one in particular that we're talking about today is our education piece. Our aims are to improve adolescent and young adult health 
through uh, conducting interdisciplinary high impact research focused on health related decision making among adolescents uh, to translate this evidence that we find in our research into effective programs like the Smart Talk program um, to reduce and prevent risky behavior to inform and support policies to improve AYA health, and then to train the next generation of leaders. This is our lab website. If you are interested in finding out a little bit more about our team, our research, look at our publications. We also have a great parent corner in here as well um, as a YAB corner. Uh, we have resources, we have our logos in here. Uh, so you can scan the QR code or I'm also popping it into the chat right now. Uh, so you can go ahead and click on that and um, everything should be in there. So this is a little bit of a overview of the other um, curriculum that we offer. Uh, I did want to mention that all of our curriculum are completely free. So all of these resources are free for your use um, in any way. Uh, we do ask that you keep our logos and all of our content, but otherwise free for your use. We have our prevention side. Uh, so that is the tobacco prevention toolkit, which comprises of the you and me together vape free curriculum. And then we have our cannabis prevention toolkit, which is today uh, what we're talking about, the smart talk curriculum. Uh, these curriculum are meant to be taught in class periods to a regular class size, maybe 20 to 30 students um, during your normal, you know, uh, maybe health education curriculum class period. And then we have our harm reduction and interventions. So we just adopted recently um, and put out an update to Safety First, which is our comprehensive drug education and harm reduction curriculum. It's a 13 lesson curriculum aimed for students, uh, mostly high school students who have already been using um, substances. We have within the 13 lessons, uh, lessons on alcohol and other depressants. We have stimulants. Uh, we have prescription pills, including fentanyl. And then, of course, we have tobacco, cannabis. We also have psychedelics. So lots of content within the 13 lessons uh, that you're more than welcome to check out as well. And then we have our Healthy Futures, which is our self-paced or small group led alternative to suspension. And this is for students who have already been caught, you know, using vaping or cannabis products on campus multiple times. Um, you know, this is just an alternative to suspension. So instead of going home, uh, missing out on school, because we all know they just go home and do it some more, they still come to class, they still get the education. And then during uh, maybe a free period or instead of recess, they come in and they do this program instead. Um, oh, I'm going to skip through these. This is just highlighting what I was talking about. So our prevention, safety first, uh, harm reduction, and then the healthy futures um, alternative to suspension. Okay, so uh, we also do have trainings on all of those as well. Um, but today we'll just be focusing on the smart talk curriculum. Um, but all of our curriculums are developed through scientific theory and supported by research. And we also really value our community partnerships. So that's all of you. You know, if you ever see a link that's down or a statistic that needs to be updated, please let us know. You know, we're very community oriented. Um, if it's a technical thing, we usually try to get it fixed within one business day. However, if it's a lot larger wish list thing, like, oh, you know, I am... Um, interested in having this kind of curriculum, or I'm noticing this issue regarding tobacco or cannabis use in my community, can we add you know, something specific to this issue? Um, definitely let us know. Uh, we always wanna know what you're interested in, what you're looking for. Um, that may take a little bit longer depending on what it is and um, what development is like, but we're more than happy to you know, partner or collaborate with anyone. Um, oh, I see something in the chat. Is, is it self-paced or someone would have to facilitate? Oh, you mean for Healthy Futures? Um, let me go back really quickly. Uh, yes, so Healthy Futures is both. There's two versions. There is a self-paced version, which is module-based. The student would just come and sit um, you know, in the office or something, and they would go through the module, and that includes uh, reflections, videos, uh, if they're open to quitting, things like that. And then we recommend, you know, if they continue to use on campus or be caught using on campus, then there's a small group, um, more of an intervention. And um, that is led to be uh, meant to be facilitated by a counselor or an administrator with two to three students. And then um, there's like a PowerPoint and then a, a little booklet and things like that. So it's both different levels. Uh, yeah, awesome. Thank you so much. If you are interested in Healthy Futures, we do have trainings on that on our Eventbrite as well. 
Uh, okay, let's see. Where was I? Partnerships. Uh, we are evidence informed and fact checked by professionals in the field. So all those people that I introduced earlier in our lab, those researchers, those postdocs, the medical doctors, um, as well as we send out our curriculum to a larger network of um, experts, you know, so it's, it's definitely fact checked. And I think one thing that makes our curriculum stand out is our ability to uh, revise or update it quickly. Um, all changes are made in real time uh, on Canva, and I'll show you where to access all of that. But, you know, whenever there's a new product or a new statistic or some kind of new study coming out, we always try to update um, as quickly as possible. And all of these wonderful things equals our curriculums. Uh, let's see. Oh, I see in the in the chat. How many sessions in the group session uh, for healthy futures? It's just one. There's a two hour version or a four hour version. Like if you have um, Saturday school or Saturday um, detention, you can use the four hour. Or if you just have maybe an after school thing and you want, or you want to break it up into multiple, you can use the two hour. Um, but it's totally up to you. So for um so that one is in lieu of suspension and then you said something about if they um get caught again there would be mm -hmm. another um program that they would be in a three to four person group and so how many sessions is that that program yeah. what I can't remember what it was called yeah um healthy futures it's uh this one here so there's just the two versions to healthy futures there's my healthy future which is the um self paced one module based. That's about, I want to say, between two two to three hours, depending on how long the student needs to fill out the reflections and things like that. And then um, the group session one, which is our Healthy Futures, there's a two or a four hour version. Um, you can do it all in one sitting or you can break it up into multiple, um, multiple sessions. Oh, and I see Scott is here. Thank you, Scott. Absolutely. Putting that in Sorry the chat. The yeah, delay. do you want to expand? Um, no. Yeah, so the My Healthy Futures takes about 40 to 60 minutes, and students usually do it in one session. And then Our Healthy Futures, um, we've done it a couple of different ways. We've done it as like a lunchtime, lunch bunch group, where we break the two to four hours into four to six sessions with the students. But we've also done it as an after school or even a Saturday school, um, where we can do the two to four hours in one chunk. So really depends on the setup of your school or your district. Awesome. Thank you, Scott. And Scott, um, I put your email in the chat earlier and let everyone know to reach out to you if they have any questions regarding our other curriculums, interested in trainings, or just interested in getting into contact. Awesome. Thank you. All right, so we'll go ahead and move on. Um, we went over development and evidence. Uh, now here are some ways to use the curriculum. So you can use the curriculum to deliver our lessons to your class or entire school, or if you aren't able to deliver you know, the lessons uh, in their entirety to your school, you can use the integrated activities in your class. Uh, you can also present the slides at a community forum for parents or students kind of in a town hall setting. You can also use our slides and curriculums as a resource in one-on-one -on -one meetings or programs intended for students quitting cannabis and then nicotine for the you and me together vape free version. Uh, we've also had some great success with using uh, the curriculums for peer-to-peer uh, -peer programs. So you can have your youth present or do a project in the curriculum. Uh, we got great feedback from some school sites that are using it, uh, like their high schoolers, you know, will choose a lesson and then we'll present it to the middle schoolers. Um, and things like that. And then you can also link our toolkit to your web website's resource page. Um, oh, okay, let's see, I see you in the chat. Oh, thank you, Tracy. Awesome. All right, so as I was mentioning before, our toolkits are interactive, online, and completely free as well. Our toolkit contains activities, uh, educator crash courses. So if you yourself want to know a little bit more about what you'll be teaching the students, so if that's um, addiction science or maybe the chemicals behind nicotine and things like that, we do have some really quick educator crash courses that you can review. Um, I'll show you where to find those in the website during the walkthrough. We also have discussion guides, which are kind of meant to be sort of take home homework assignments so the students can continue the discussion with their parents at home. Um, you can assign it as homework or you can have them do it in class as well. We also have fact sheets, Kahoot games and Canvas slides. All right. Um, 
now that's a little bit about our you know larger uh, reach lab and the curriculum that we offer. Now we're gonna kind of hone in on Smart Talk Cannabis Prevention and Awareness Curriculum. Now, the goals of our curriculum are to increase students' knowledge about harms that cannabis can cause, for students to gain awareness of strategies that manufacturers and sellers of cannabis employ to increase use among adolescents. They use things like deceptive and creative marketing strategies. We have a whole lesson dedicated to this. That's lesson four. Um, and we show, you know, real ads that they may find uh, online and social media or even just um portrayals of cannabis in media, whether that's movies, TV shows, or uh, music videos. Uh, another goal is for students to gain skills to refuse experimentation and use of cannabis products. And ultimately, the goal is to reduce or prevent cannabis use of any type, including inhaled products. So that's the burning of cannabis and e-cigarettes or vaping cannabis and then ingested products as well. Now, uh, here are some statistics about the reach of our lab or about um, Smart Talk in specific. Smart Talk has reached almost 380,000 students across the globe. We've trained over 3,300 educators now. And while we don't have any formal evaluation for the Smart Talk right now, we do have a formal evaluation on the Tobacco Prevention Toolkit and the You and Me Together Vape Free. And we do have preliminary evidence that it does change students' attitudes, uh, knowledge, and perceptions of cannabis or sorry um nicotine and e-cigarettes and we use the same kind of um strategies in this curriculum as well here's a little bit about our usa usage we are so proud and honored to be able to say that we're being used uh in some way shape or form by every state in the u.s obviously mostly in california since we are based here in palo alto but some way every single state and uh, globally as well. We've had a lot of great talks with um, other countries. Uh, we've been talking with like New Zealand. I know we've talked a bit uh, with Italy and uh, even like Armenia as well. I think there was an inquiry to translate our slides into Armenian. Uh, so just amazing, amazing what we can do when we collaborate. Um, I don't know, Scott, if you want to add anything. Um, at this point, you're nodding. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think the, the reach, it's sounds strange to say the reach of reach lab um, but uh, since we've released our data dashboard and some of the other components and the updates of the spanish versions of are you and me together vape free and the elementary versions of smart talk and you and me together um, the the reach has just expanded exponentially uh, because there's been so much need um, in both multi multiple languages but also um, the vaping and cannabis legalization um, for adult use across the U.S. continues to increase, um, which therefore means that more young people are seeing it normalized in their communities. Yeah, thank you, Scott. Um, all right. If you are interested in seeing uh, a little bit about our publications on our on our lab, on the curriculums that we've done so far, uh, you can go to our FAQ page. I'm also putting this into the chat. Uh, you can click that link in the chat or you can scan the QR code if you're interested in learning more. Okay, so this is the Smart Talk curriculum. There are five lessons in the curriculum and they're each designed to be about 50 minutes each or one class period long. You're more than welcome to split it up into multiple days if you don't have 50 minutes or you know if you have 45 minutes, you can always change an activity, remove an activity, uh, completely customizable for you. These are the five lessons. Uh, we'll be going over an example of each of them in just a moment. But before we do that, uh, as Scott mentioned, I did want to introduce our data dashboard. Um, this is a new feature that Scott has worked tirelessly on, and it's basically for us to gather data, you know, for you um, concerning uh, your students' attitudes, knowledge, and perception towards um, nicotine or cannabis. Um, or, and then this is also where we have our Healthy Futures platform. They do like a pre-survey, you teach the curriculum, and then they do a post-survey, and then you have complete access to that data as well. Uh, so the why, it's to gather and analyze data for growth and improvement, both locally and system-wide, to evaluate the effectiveness of the curriculum and interventions, and to simplify reporting to funders. We have a, a quick video on how to register, but I'm going to just put that in the chat for time. Um, purposes. I don't know, Scott, if you wanted to add a little bit um, about the dashboard while I put in the, the links into the chat. 
Uh, no, it, it's been great to be able to have a data collection tool that's built into the curriculum. I know frequently mm -hmm. we assess what's important to us and our health and wellness curriculum on a regular basis is not something we assessed pre and post. Um, so the idea of being able to have a dashboard where a teacher in a classroom, a counselor, a community-based partner who's pushing into schools, an after-school provider, an administrator who is um, assigning an intervention or providing an intervention in lieu of a suspension can now be able to see pre and post data, but then also at the end for an intervention, for example, student would get a certificate of completion and the person who assigned the intervention would also see that student's name pop up on their data dashboard saying, little Scotty Gerbert has now completed the My Healthy Futures intervention. So it's a lot of great data, especially when it comes to being able to find out uh, for grant tracking purposes or funding purpose to say, we served 480 students at these three middle schools. Great. Thank you, Scott. Scott's put in a lot of um, effort and time and energy into creating the dashboard, and it's been amazing so far. So if you click on the teacher landing page or the data dashboard landing page and you make um, an account, what will happen is you'll have your own, um, you know, profile, you have a teacher code. So regardless of if you teach at one or multiple schools, your teacher code will be the same. And then when the students go to the student page, they enter your teacher code in here, um, just like this. And then they'll click go to form where they can do the surveys and things like that. And then you'll be able to see how many responses you've had. Um, and then it's aggregated by class or class period data. Okay, so um, just moving on. Uh, as I mentioned before, most of our slides are on Canva um, and you will need a Canva account to be able to see the slides and the talking points, to make a copy of the slides, to share the slides um, and things like that. Um, but there are two levels to Canva. Uh, there's Canva Basic, which is free for everyone. And that's all you need to be able to see our slides and download the slides. However, there's also Canva Pro, uh, that comes completely for free for educators and nonprofits. So if you are an educator or belong to a nonprofit and you have like a .edu uh, email address, you should be verified or um, signed up for a Canva Pro account completely for free when you sign up. Um, if you do need any help making a Canva account, getting Canva Pro or anything like that, um, please uh, feel free to reach out to us at any time. Okay, uh, so this is just an example slide, or I'm going to briefly go over each of our lessons within uh, Smart Talk. The first one is full of potential, your brain cannabis free. And we've been finding out that students love learning about their brains. They love learning about how their brains are developing, the different sections of their brain. Um, and we do talk about how in adolescence their brain grows from the back to the front and that last thing to develop is the prefrontal cortex uh, which continues developing into age uh, until about age 25 or so or the mid-20s uh, which is why it's so important to protect the growth and development at this stage. I did want to mention as well um, we do have multiple versions I think Scott was saying a little bit earlier but we have a elementary middle and high school version of Smart Talk. The elementary version is only two lessons long because we figured, you know, we want to just introduce the topic. We're, we're not going too in depth into the neurons and the chemicals involved. Um, but the middle and high school are also are, you know, more in depth. Uh, the high school has a bit higher level science and involving brain development, chemicals, reading level. Uh, and then the middle school is a little bit more activity focused. They, it's a little bit more animated and fun. This one that we're looking at right now is the middle school version. Um, but as you'll see, the high school one is a little bit more different. It has pictures of real teens and things like that. Um, so those are the different levels. But uh, lesson one continues to talk about what is cannabis. So we go over CBD versus THC and the chemical components of that. And here's a great little chart about, you know, if students are using cannabis, yes. Okay, well, maybe consider stopping until the brain is finished developing or consider at least reducing how much they use if stopping is difficult. Uh, and if they're not using cannabis, consider never starting or at least consider waiting until the brain is finished developing to decide. The key takeaways for lesson one are that the teen's brain's job is to figure out what makes you, you. The brain is awesome and full of potential and everyone's brain is unique. 
And we also say that um, an adolescent's brain is particularly vulnerable to drugs, which is why it's important to not introduce things like cannabis into the brain at this time. And drugs like cannabis are tricky for the brain because they may feel good at first, but they do damage um, the brain over time and over development. So that's lesson one, all about the brain. Lesson two is healthy body, healthy youth effects of cannabis on the rest of the body. So we talk about everything from the heart to the lungs, of course, even to the digestive system, since cannabis can be, um, you know, taken in through digestion. This is a great example slide about refusal skills, how it's um, how cannabis is no fun in the lungs. So if they smoke or vape cannabis, it can cause inflammation and irritation of the airways. It can cause damage to the air sacs in the lungs, and it can cause weaker immune response to infection, which is important for things like COVID-19. You know, it may be harder to recover um, from things like that if they are smoking or using cannabis. The key takeaways for lesson two is that smoked or aerosolized cannabis like joints, vapes, or dabbing uh, does cause short and long-term damage to the body, including the lungs, heart, and the brain. Uh, consuming cannabis edibles can take longer to feel the effects, and ingesting high amounts of THC can cause nausea and vomiting. This is important because we're finding a lot of students may um, take an edible, notice that they're not feeling any anything after 20 to 30 minutes, and then take some more, and they end up getting sick because they consume too much, uh, and that's when it can um, affect the digestive system. We also talk about second and third hand cannabis smoke and how the aerosol is not just harmful for the person smoking, but for the people and um, potentially animals around them. So even if someone or a student may think, oh, I'm invincible, it's only affecting me. Uh, we do want to point out that, you know, second and third hand aerosol uh, and smoke is a thing. And if they have younger siblings that they care about, if they have a pet that they care about, we don't want um, them to be, you know, touching the ground and then the, the younger sibling puts their hands in the mouth or um, the animals maybe, you know, are impacted as well. So always taking that into account. Um, and then going cannabis free allows the body to heal right away. So if the student is using, we never want to make them feel like, oh, it's too late for me. I'm using already and my body's damaged, whatever. Uh, we always want to leave the door open uh, for quitting. So that's lesson two. And lesson three is about healthy people, healthy community. So we touch upon um, a few different subjects here, but um, first we talk about cannabis smoke in a community, uh, including secondhand cannabis smoke again. And we mentioned how uh, cannabis smoke can easily go from apartment to apartment or location to location, location to location through walls, vents, windows, hallways, and stairways, since many students do live in multi-generational housing and it's important to recognize how they affect those around them uh, and their communities in general. And we also talk about the environment and how using things like cannabis vapes um, or even, you know, quote unquote, disposable cannabis vapes um, does affect the environment. We go over the different parts of the vape here, as well as cannabis vapes are mostly made out of plastic. And as we all know, plastic takes hundreds of years to break down. And even when they do, they become microplastics. They get into our waterways, nature, soil, and even our food sometimes if it's in the soil. I also saw an article kind of recently about, I think they're finding uh, microplastics in rain now. Um, I have to double check where I saw that, but I, I just saw that on the news and that's you know just crazy. And um, thinking about how this use of an optional item really affects the environment. So the key takeaways for lesson three are that cannabis affects the whole community. Second and third hand cannabis smoke is not just harmful for the person who's smoking, but for the people around them. There's also a great activity in lesson three called the photo voice activity. And um, that's where students, you know, go out into the community and take pictures of how cannabis affects their community. So whether that's um, someone smoking at a park or someone, you know, hotboxing a car in, in the parking lot or a um, billboard they may see on their way to school every single day. They take pictures of that and then you they bring it to class and they discuss, you know, how is this affecting our community? Um, I don't believe it's in this lesson, but... In the you and me version, there's a great uh, side anecdote about how, you know, in certain communities, there are more smoke shops than there are access to healthy groceries. And then they discuss, you know, how how that has an effect on the community. And then ending with an empowerment piece as well, you or the student uh, has a voice and can make a difference in improving the health of your community.
Okay, now lesson four, uh, as I mentioned uh, in our goals section, this one is about marketing, uh, messaging, marketing and messaging used in media. And we talk about how, you know, the cannabis industry may portray cannabis um, to youth and, you know, how they may see it in media from music videos to movies, TV shows, uh, things like that. We also have some great examples of real ads. You know, these these are real ads um, taken from Instagram. And uh, we discuss the tactics and different ways uh, that uh, adolescents could be enticed. So this one here, example slide is for color, you know, the bright colors. This one's like candy flavors and the kind of, you know, messaging that they're receiving. Uh, there are some great, you know, picking apart the tactics of product placement, um, different communities and things like that. So that's all within lesson four. And the key takeaways are that the cannabis industry uses deceptive marketing tactics to make cannabis use um, and their products appeal cool, appear cool. Uh, the cannabis industry uses attractive packaging and a variety of products to appeal to young people. So whether that's the vapes or, you know, edibles, uh, even oils and tinctures and things like that. And then when uh, lesson four exposes deceptive marketing tactics used by the cannabis industry um, to reduce their influence. And then lastly, again, that empowerment piece, youth are in charge of their narrative and not the cannabis industry. Now, lesson five, or our last lesson, is a novel lesson or a new lesson. It's titled Be Your Strength, Stress, Coping, and Wellness. And whenever we ask students why they're using or what's their biggest barrier to quitting, they usually say, you know, I'm so stressed out and this is the only thing that helps me. Or, um, you know, my friends use this to help cope with stress. And we really wanted to make this lesson kind of geared towards that or geared towards uh, getting to the root of the problem. And we provide them with different coping skills. Um, there's a great breathing activity in here as well. Uh, we also talk about mental health and self-medication and how we may respond by choosing activities we think will help us reduce stress, like using cannabis. Um, but ultimately, self-medication is when someone uses these substances to repeatedly and consistently deal with stress, anxiety, or other mental health issues. So we talk about stress, what that is. There's positive stress, like what you may feel uh, before a big soccer game or before a big test. And then there's negative stress where it starts to encroach um, on daily life activities and then um, using cannabis as self-medication. So the key takeaways for this lesson is that stress is a part of everyone's life. There are healthy ways to cope with stress, and then there are unhealthy ways to cope with stress, like using cannabis. Uh, there's a great activity in here where students have to come up with their own coping mechanisms. So whether that's going out for a walk, um, talking it through with a friend, watching a good movie, um, I like online shopping, um, and they have to you know figure out what works best for them and figure out these new mechanisms or skills that they can use instead of using cannabis. And then we also touch on the stigma of substance use and how that may worsen uh, mental health and underlying stressors because we're telling them through all these five lessons that it's bad for you, it's bad for you, it's bad for you, don't use it. Um, odds are they may know someone you know who uses it for stress reasons, whether that's a family member, a peer, a friend, or even themselves. And we never want to create the stigma around substance use because we never know what someone may be going through. And we always want to approach everything with compassion and empathy and again, leaving the door open for getting help help or getting printing resources. So that's lesson five. Um, I know I breezed through everything really quickly. That was just a quick example of each lesson. Um, but we're going to jump into a live walkthrough of our website where I'll show you how to get all these wonderful things. Um, but before we do that, are there any questions regarding content, setup of um, the five lessons or things like that? Any questions? Great, thank you so much. Okay, if there are no questions, I'm gonna go ahead and put this link into the chat and then I'm gonna um, switch my screens over to the, um, the website walkthrough. One moment, let me just get tab up. All right, here we are. So if you click on that link that I sent in the chat, or if you just Google um, Stanford Cannabis Awareness and Prevention Toolkit, uh, you should be directed to this page. Um, here's the Smart Talk landing page. Important, here's more information about the dashboard. If you are interested in signing up, you can uh, click 
the button to this data dashboard. And then if you scroll down a little bit more, um, here is where the bulk of like our curriculum and information lies. We have our introduction, so intro to the curriculum and general information. We have a tab on using Canva. So we'll go over how to make a copy and everything in a little bit. But if you are having trouble with your Canva account or making a copy, this is a great first place to kind of look. But again, um, you know, if you can't find the help that you need here, please feel free to email us. We also have a parent letter here. So if you want to send home a letter to your student's parents saying, hey, we'll be using the Stanford um, Smart Talk Cannabis Awareness and Prevention Curriculum in class. This is what it entails. If you have questions, um, feel free to reach out. Uh, so that's a template here. Feel free to you know download the template. You can print it on your own school's letterhead. You can edit it and sign your own name or anything like that. But this is just an additional resource for you. We do have a different cultures and languages tab. We are currently working on the Spanish translations uh, for Smart Talk. For Smart Talk, uh, the you and me ones for the vaping and nicotine are out already, so you can find them under this tab uh, on the you and me website as well. But uh, when we do finish the Spanish translations, we're just making sure you know everything is correct. Um, they will be located here, and then we have our FAQ page. Um, let's see. Oh, thank you, Scott, for answering some questions. Awesome. Okay. Uh, so if you want the uh, actual lessons, what you'll do is you'll scroll up, up here uh, to um, these tabs. And this is where you can get the slides. So we have elementary school, we have middle school here, and then we have high school. So um, as I mentioned, elementary is only two lessons, but middle and high school are the five lessons. Um, but as you can see, they're a little bit um, different. The high school, see this is like a real picture. There's pictures of real teens. Uh, and then the middle school is a little bit more, more fun and more animated. Um, but just for an example, I'm going to take you onto our lesson page. Uh, was there any one lesson that anyone was interested in knowing more about um, level or lesson at all? Just for an example. So there's high school. Oh, oh high school? Sure. And then uh, which which lesson were you interested in? Uh, maybe the second one. The second one? Sure. Yeah. This is just an example just to show you, but we'll um, go into it a bit. Thank you so much, Denise. Uh, so say this is your second um, class period that you're teaching the curriculum. Uh, you're a high school educator, so you'll click on high school and then click on lesson two. And this will take you to the lesson page. Uh, now you can, of course, toggle back to that introduction page or any of the other lessons up here. Um, and then we have our introduction, we have learning objectives and key takeaways. So what we want the students coming out of the lesson having learned. We have our national and California standards, including the health education, um, next generation science standards, and common core education standards. Um, this will just take you to a Google Doc where you can preview the standards. And if you scroll down a little bit more, uh, here's where you can preview the slides. So you can, of course, click through it. Um, there's like a warning that this will contain, you know, images of cannabis. We have our topics here. I will learn. So you can, of course, uh, preview that. But if you want the um, le lesson slides yourself on Canva, you'll be clicking this green bar um, right above the preview. It says view high school lesson two on Canva. And this is after you've already made your Canva account and you're signed in on your browser. What you'll do is you'll click on this green button and it should take you to this template. And then you click on use template. And now this is, completely for your use. Um, it'll say copy of Smart Talk Lesson 2 High School, but of course you can change, you know, you can take away the copy, you can put your name or your school or maybe even your class period. Um, and now you can edit. So if you wanna put in a picture of your own uh, class or say like your own class sports, uh, if you have maybe a longer classroom where students in the back have sometimes problems seeing, you can al also, you know, increase the size of the text here. Of course, you can um, change it as you please. And if you do want to see the notes, what you'll do is you click on this presenter notes in the bottom, kind of left hand side, kind of middle um, notes here, and then it'll pop up on the left here. It'll say talking points uh, for this slide, etc. cetera. Uh, next one, you have the talking points as well. If you have like an activity, like I think this one, unless um, slide five is an activity, so it'll give you activity instructions and then follow up discussion for the activity and things like that. 
Uh, you're also welcome you know, to edit the talking points. And as I mentioned before, uh, these are supposed to be 50 minutes long. If you don't have all that time, you can, of course, you know, remove, say, this one activity that'll save you a couple minutes. Um, you can skip a video. We really recommend previewing um, all the content before teaching it. Um, let's see as well. The only thing that we do ask, again, is that you keep these logos on our slide um, as they are. Awesome. Um, oh, let's look at the chat really fast before moving on. Um, oh, thank you. Where do we find this Canva presentation again? Oakwood Junior High. Yes. So um, to get here, you'll go to that website that I dropped in the link, which is our uh, Smart Talk website here. And then you'll land on this introduction page here. And then you'll click on elementary, middle, or high school, whichever um, you know level you'll be teaching and whatever lesson you'll be teaching. And then you click on that lesson again. And then here's where you get to that lesson page. And then you click on this green bar and it'll say, you know, you're, you're, you can access a template of this since the original slides are locked. And then you can, once you access the template, that is completely yours to, um, to use. Yeah, hopefully that answered your question. Uh-huh. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Phoebe. Um, oh, yes. Thank you, Scott. Hopefully, um, Spanish translation is coming soon in the fall. Awesome. Okay, now going back to um, the slides. Sorry, I just had to move that really fast. Uh, so we are on talking points, uh, keeping the logos on the slide. This is a great resource here uh, is the share button in the upper right hand corner by this little arrow. You click on that. Um, if you're working with another educator or if you're like co-facilitating uh, the lessons, you can also add them by their email to your designs. So that way, if you're working on the same slide set, you know, you don't have to make different changes. You can access the same slide set. Um, if you want, you can send it out to your students as well. And then you can change the collaboration link. So. You can add a team. Um, anyone with the link can edit, can view, can comment. So if you're sending it out to your students, um, lock it. So you can say anyone with the link can view only. <laughs> um, and then you can copy the link and send it out to your students or anyone um, that you'd like. You can also download the slides. So say you've made your adjustments and things like that. Um, you can download it, it as a PDF standard, PDF print. There's PowerPoint option here as well. Uh, videos, JPEGs, anything like that. Um, and then Scott actually showed me this a little while ago. If you click on this include notes um, little check mark here, it'll include the talking points in your PDF. So if that's not checked, you'll just get uh, a PDF of the slides, but be sure to check it. And then the talking points will come uh, with the with the PDF and the images of the slides. And then you click download and then you can have it as well. Um, we do recommend doing everything within Canva. So once you access the template, um, you should make your edits in Canva. We recommend presenting in Canva just because, you know, everything is embedded in here. All the videos, all the animations are here, uh, the activities are embedded. And while you do have the option to download it as a PDF or as a PowerPoint, sometimes the download isn't super seamless. There are some uh, fonts that may be different or some animations that may not work. Um, but that is, of course, available for you if you are having uh, any issues with Canva. But we also recommend um, like doing your edits and then presenting. So what I like to do is click on present and then you can present full screen, present and record. But I really like presenter view because what happens is two windows will open. One will be your audience window and it's just the current slide that you're on. And that's all that your students or your audience will be able to see. Uh, and then the second window that opens will be your view. So you'll have the current slide that you're on the next slide that's coming up, and then any talking points that um, accompanies the slide as well. Uh, it may be a little hard to see, but this is what um, presenter view looks like. And that's what I recommend using. Um, all right, I think that's everything I wanted to show you within Canva. Any questions regarding, uh, let me check this, the chat. Um, you are a school nurse, how can you promote this to uh, educators or admin? Um, yeah, a great question. You can always, um, you know, share this with them. You can share our website with them. We're more than happy to make, you know, one-on-one -on -one meetings as well. If you would like more information, um, we also have a lot of trainings, you know, scheduled. So if you go to that Eventbrite page and they're interested in seeing um, what the content looks like, they're pretty much, you know, set up similarly. 
uh, to this training, um, but they're more than welcome to chain, attend a training as well. Um, yeah, thank you for your question. Any other question? As a school counselor, would we register as a teacher or admin for the data dashboard? I don't know, Scott, do you have a, a preference yes, as a counselor? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can actually register either way. If you register as an administrator, you just want to make sure that when you're on the registration page, that you click on the box that says, I am also a teacher. And that Got way it. you'll get a teacher code. If you don't click on that, then you don't end up with a teacher code. So you want to make sure you click on that. I'm also a teacher box. Got it. And we'll get an email with the code. Um, as soon as you um, click submit, then it, I believe it sends you an authentication email that says, please confirm your email address is accurate. Um, so you'll check your email inbox. When you click on that, as soon as you go in, it's gonna show you your profile. And at the top left, it's gonna have in bright yellow or gold, um, your eight to 10 digit unique teacher ID code. Got it, thank you so much. Absolutely. Great, thank you, Scott. Um, and then we also have a question, how do students log onto the dashboard so staff can uh, track their progress? So at the beginning of every um, curriculum that we have, so say even in Smart Talk Lesson 1, we will have a QR code or a slide with a QR code that leads into the dashboard. So um, this is Lesson 1 of Smart Talk. Uh, just, just to show you, here it is. So um, within the slide set, it's there. You have the um, URL there, which is case sensitive, by the way, or they can um, scan the QR code and then that'll take them directly to the dashboard where they'll put in your unique teacher code. They do the survey and then this same slide, um, but the post, um, the post version of the survey is at the end of lesson five. So when you begin teaching lesson one, before you even start anything, I think it's like the second slide um, right after this introduction page uh, is this. And then at the very, very end, when you finish teaching lesson five, there's the post there too. So that's how they can, that's how they can get there. But I also put the links in the chat as well. Uh, if you wanted to just save them or bookmark them. And I did want to add the question about um, students being able to track their progress as they work through the Healthy Futures curriculum, the intervention um, curriculum. So the dashboard won't track where they are in process. So if they're, you know, on slide 12 or slide 27, it doesn't track that piece. It only tracks when they started and if they've completed the curriculum. So that's, it doesn't track like are they halfway through it? Uh, because it's intended for the My Healthy Futures to be a sit down. They do the 40 to 60 minute lesson at one time. They can definitely come back to it um, if they need to go back to class or there's some reason they can't complete it all at once. But the it's it doesn't track progress along the way for the students. It's just a pre and a post. Great, thank you, Scott. Um, and I see another question, are there follow-up surveys like 30 to 60 days after the end of the curriculum? I don't believe so, not on the data dashboard at this point. No, yeah. we do. We actually will be having um, a randomized control trial for Smart Talk, um, hopefully next school year. Um, so at, at that time, there will be pre and post and the 30, 60, 90 day follow up with students. Um, the way that this, uh, that we're doing it with this pre and post, it doesn't track longitudinally years out, um, but the randomized control trial will down the road, but that's a different setup and system. Awesome, thank you. Any um, questions regarding Canva, how to get to that template, website questions, um, anything like that? Awesome, thank you. Okay, um, if there are no questions, I will head back to the website. So we were on Canva and we did you know, all of the talking points and things like that, but now, back to the website, we clicked on this um, green bar view high school lesson one or lesson two on Canva. 
And if you scroll down a little bit more, here's where you'll find more resources. We have a talking point and slide chart here. So if you click on that, it'll just take you to a Google document. Um, and you scroll down, it's a table of the image, the slide number, and then the talking points. Image, slide, talking points. Um, I did want to mention these are just screenshots, though. So if you do make any changes uh, within Canva, they won't translate over to um, the slide chart. But this is a great place to turn to when you want to just preview everything. Um, if you want to go here before you go to Canva, this is a great place to like look it over, see how much time you will have. Um, it's also much better for printing because if you download the slides as a PDF, um, it's like one slide per page of PDF. So if you if it's like a 40 slide um, presentation, you're going to be printing 40 pages, uh, whereas this one, let's see here, it is 20 pages. So about half. Um, half of the printing page. Uh, and then you can also like annotate it and have it in front of you if you want to have it in paper copy when you're presenting. But just an additional resource for you. Uh, going back to the website now, here's where you can find that discussion guide. And if you click on that, it also will take you to a Google Doc. Uh, if you scroll down, each of them are a little bit different. And again, they're just designed uh, for the students to take home this discussion and discuss with a parent, a trusted adult mentor, or a peer friend if you want to do it in class. But for example, this one asks them to read the story and then answer uh, these questions pertaining to the story and what they learned uh, throughout the lesson. Totally optional if you want to grade them, if you want to collect them, uh, but it's just an additional activity. And then uh, if you click on this lesson one high school Kahoot, it'll take you directly to the Kahoot link. You can just click start game. And then I believe it comes up with a pin on the website and then your students put in the pin into their um, Kahoot.it game and then they can play. Uh, each Kahoot is about between seven to 10 questions, I believe. Uh, but the whole thing is designed to be about 10 minutes and that's part of the 50 minute lesson. However, um, if you have like high school or anything like that, uh, sorry, if you have high school students at, or students that tend to get a little bit rowdy um, and you don't want them to have their phones out or if phones and internet isn't allowed in, in class, um, we also have a printable PDF version where you can just um, you know download it and then print it and then they can circle the choices, uh, multiple choice style. And then we also have our PowerPoint download here. So if you, um, you know, are having trouble with Canva, you can't get, you know, get your account going, and but you just need the slides. Uh, here is that PowerPoint download available for you. And then you can also um, jump to lesson two from here. Okay, um, I think that's all that I want to show you regarding Canva and the website. Hopefully, it's you know pretty clear. All of the lesson pages are set up like this with the introduction, the preview slides, the key takeaways, um, things like that. Any questions regarding website, navigation, or Canva? All right. If there are no questions, we have about 20 minutes. Um, so I'm going to be putting everyone into breakout rooms. Uh, and then what you'll do is within your breakout room, you can just decide which level you want to do, what lesson you want to do. But basically, this is just a chance for you to get into the website, get into the slides, see if you can download them, and then just discuss how would you best use this with your students, whether, you know, you can say, oh, I love this activity, my students loved this activity. Um, I would dedicate you know, the most time to this, or I would do these lessons. Um, this has worked for me in the past, et cetera. So you can totally pick um, which one you'd like, um, but yeah, just get in there, um, go to the website and let me know if you have any questions. We'll take about uh, 10 minutes for this. I'm going to, let's see, we have, um, I'll make nine breakout rooms, okay. So I'm going to open the breakout rooms and we'll take 10 minutes. We'll come back at 12, 13. All right. Should be open now. Um, feel free to join and we'll see you back in 10. Sure. All right. We have about another 40 seconds before everyone comes back from the breakout rooms. Um, thank you so much for your participation.
about 15 more seconds. All right. Okay, I think everyone should be back now. All of the breakout rooms are closed, I believe. Um, yeah, so thank you everyone for your participation. I popped into a few rooms, um, but I wasn't able to get everyone. Uh, so uh, yeah, how did your uh, conversation go? Did you collaborate with anyone? Did you find out new things? Um, were you able to get on the website? Everything was okay. Um, any questions regarding any of that? Right. Yeah, if no questions, um, what's something new that you found? Were you able to get on the website? What lesson did you look at? You can also put it in the chat too. Um, but I heard some great conversations about how you would collaborate or um, different programs that you may use. Okay, let's see. Teresa was able to get in and marking all the pages. Awesome, awesome. I did get a question about Canva as well. So uh, yes, you will need a Canva account. Uh, again, there's Canva Basic and Canva Pro. Um, all you need is Canva Basic to access the slides, which is completely free for everyone. Um, but if you are an educator or belong to a nonprofit, highly, highly recommend getting Canva Pro completely for free. Uh, it's like a paid subscription. But if you are, um, if you sign up with your .edu email address, or if you submit some kind of testimony that you do belong to a nonprofit, you should get it for free. Okay, elementary lessons. Yeah, that's a great one that we've had um, a lot of uh, what is it requests for, you know, starting prevention early and earlier um, is better, but also kind of crazy, you know, we've been getting educators saying as young as um, first or second grade, they're finding students having vapes. So um, definitely the elementary was something that um, folks were asking for. Um, they're designed to be about a third grade reading level. Uh, so if you want to go younger, of course, you can edit the slides to make them you know, a bit simpler. Um, or if you're doing maybe like fourth grade, of course, you can add an activity in there. Um, fifth or sixth grade, you might be able to use the middle school version as well, depending on your students, of course. So um, just preview the slides and see which versions will be best, best for your students. Oh, I see. Are you combining this with ACE, the first childhood events? in any way, trauma screening and prevention? That is actually a great question. Um, I don't think we have anything right now, but um, trauma screening and prevention. That reminds so, me uh, of the fifth lesson, but, oh, sorry, go ahead, Scott. Yeah. No, yeah. I was just gonna say that our Healthy Futures um, intervention and, and that curriculum piece definitely mm -hmm. ties in um, ACEs, it ties in restorative practices, it ties in, um, uh, cognitive behavioral therapy and motivational interviewing. So that definitely ties in directly um, with those pieces. Um, our general smart talk and you and me together vape free do not have those same specific stated ACEs or some of the other pieces with embedded within it. Great, thank you, Scott, for the um, eloquent answer. Yes, uh, Healthy Futures does have um all of those oh, okay great thank you okay if no other questions or um comments i'm just gonna go ahead and head back to my slides uh all right Great. Um, so as we are wrapping up we did ask want to ask um, if you could take this post training survey for us um just to let us know um if you liked it I'm going to go ahead and put that into the chat or you can scan the QR code. Oh, I see one more question as well. Are there plans to develop an intervention toolkit for those who are actively using and need support with quitting or harm reduction? I see Scott nodding. Um, but yeah, I mean, we have the uh, safety first uh, curriculum, which is the harm reduction curriculum. And that is already meant for students who are using. Um, and that's 13 lessons regarding all types of drugs, including alcohol, um, tobacco and cannabis, of course. We also have prescriptions like fentanyl, um, psychedelics, and a, and a 
bunch of others as well. So that's a great place to look. Oh, and then Scott just dropped the link into the chat. We also do have trainings offered on Safety First too. So that is more of an intervention, harm reduction um, kind of informational uh, presentation for students who are already using. And then again, uh, the Healthy Futures would be a great place for students who are need needing support with quitting and or harm or harm reduction. Um, healthy Futures, they'd complete uh, like reflections on, you know, what are their motivations for using, if they can find different coping skills, they complete reflections on uh, how open they are to quitting as well. Um, and then in the Healthy Futures version, um, with, with in the small group version, the Our Healthy Futures, there's like a little booklet that they fill out um, including that. So yeah, those are two great resources for you to use. Uh, I don't know if you wanted to add anything there, Scott. Okay, <laughs> awesome, thank you. Okay, um, just for time's sake, I'm gonna move on, but um, the link to our survey is in the chat. If you wanna take another second or so to scan the QR code and get there, um, you can also complete this at a later time. We just ask that you um, complete it to let us know. Uh, if you liked it, how we did. Um, here is our save the date for our fifth annual teaching cannabis awareness and prevention virtual conference. Uh, this is the only thing that we do charge for. It will be on April 17 and 18, 2024. We just had a really successful one um, this past April. We had some great speakers. Um, it was really, really amazing. The team worked so hard on it. Uh, you can also access the recordings for up to a year after the, the conference. So uh, it's virtual. Uh, if you're able to attend via Zoom, if not, you can always access the recordings if you can't um, attend in real time. But it's focusing on the triangulum of cannabis, tobacco, slash nicotine, and vaping. Um, so just save the date for that. Um, oh, I see another question. Have we gotten feedback from youth about various types of refusal strategies, health impacts, deceptive marketing, microplastics? Are there some strategies that are more impactful or meaningful to youth or lots of variety? That's a great question. Um, I think we had gotten some feedback. Uh, I think it really depends. A lot of youth are interested, you know, on health impacts and a lot of them aren't. Um, I think um, some of them are like, oh, I don't want to damage my lungs or um, things like that. And then some, a lot of times the ones who are the ones tend to be using um, don't really care about that or don't think in the long-term effects. That's part of, you know, the adolescent development. Um, but we do think health impacts are super important, especially the brain lesson. Um, deceptive marketing. Uh, I think we've gotten good feedback on that as well. Students definitely relate to ads that they feel like, I guess, <laughs> relate to them. Um, you know, ads that they may have seen on uh, social media, Instagram, Snapchat, things like that. Uh, they definitely are really interested in peer-to-peer -peer things as well. Um, so things that their peers may think is cool. Um, so that's where I think the marketing strategies are um, really, really important. The environmental one, I think we've gotten mixed on that too. I think it depends on where students live. If you live um, like on a coastal area where there's a lot of nature, a lot of parks, students there really do um, tend to care about the environment. And I think that's really important. But then some other places it doesn't hit, you know, as hard as um hit home as much. Um, but yeah, they, I want to, I guess, open it back up to the larger group. Are there any strategies um, that are impactful for your youth and where, where do you come from and your communities? Feel free to um, put it in the chat as well. Well, and that's one of the other reasons we've divided the curriculum into those five lesson areas is that in some of the students, you're going to get a group of students who the mental health anxiety, depression, et cetera, piece of it um, is really important. And they're gonna really hone in on that and recognize that maybe I could change my behavior and, and what's leading me to self-medicating is blank. And what are some other strategies that I'm finding in lesson five? Um, and the same as Carla was mentioning, there are some students who are totally drawn to the environmental piece of it and go, I'm not gonna engage because those single use or disposable products are really dangerous and there's no way to get rid of them because there's part e-device and part toxic waste. And I can't just throw that in the garbage. And then some that are looking at it with the lens of why are they manipulating me? I'm a teenager. I don't want adults manipulating me. And so they'll get into that lesson 
about targeted marketing, et cetera. And they'll get really upset and pissed about the fact that someone, that they're not getting to make that choice, that someone else is strategically marketing at them to try and make them sway their thoughts and beliefs. And so that's sort of why those five people say, which lesson should I use? And I'm like, you actually, because you don't know which one is going to move your students forward, all five of them are really important to have because students have different things that motivate them. Yeah, great. Thank you, Scott. Um, yeah, just to expand on that, I think it depends on your students. We've gotten good feedback for pretty much all of our lessons, but you know, um, depending on the community, you may decide what's best um, or most appealing to your specific students. Um, I see Amber wrote, for my students, many buy off the black market. Should I share information? There's no guarantee that it actually contains cannabis. Exactly. And that may hit home for a lot of students. Um, thought it was a vape pen, but it was lace. So they're just scared to take that risk. Certainly, uh, we're finding that uh, a lot of health risks uh, are important as well. Um, oh, I see we're coming up on time. So just for that, um, I'm going to finish up really fast, but please continue to write in the chat. And then um, I'm more than happy to stay on for a few minutes after if we want for the discussion, but um, follow us on social media. These are our social media pages. Um, we have our Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook as well. If you want to look out for launches or if you want to just tag us in any new articles that come out, um, please do. And then uh, we just want to say thank you so much. If you do have any questions, please scan the QR code that'll take you to a Google form uh, that Scott has access to. So, um, you know, if you're interested in anything that our lab does in addition to our curriculum, if you want trainings or more information on healthy futures and you pretty popular today. Um, so please scan that QR code. I'll also put um, this uh, email into the chat. Um, reach lab. EDU. Okay, so that is our general lab email as well. And then I'll put in my personal email uh, here again. Okay, great. It's in there. Awesome. Thank you so much. So scan the QR code. And then if not, I know we have a few minutes left. So I'll hand it back to Tracy for closing remarks. Yes, thank you so much for the awesome presentation. I just want to make sure I'm sharing a couple more details with you all. Um, so first, I wanted to share our upcoming webinar. I did mention it at the beginning of the webinar for folks who just joined us a little bit later. We are collaborating with Stanford Reach Lab again for the Healthy Futures curriculum. So if this is of interest to you, um, please register um, at the link. I'm can, I can go ahead and share that as well. Here's the link um, for y'all. Oops, let me move some things around. Right. But that is uh, going to be taking place on Wednesday, November 1st from 12 to 1 p.m. And we hope to see you all there. Um, also, there are our these are our emails addresses right here for you all. If there's any other questions that you have after this webinar that you're like, I didn't get to ask this or I didn't quite think of it during the webinar, feel free to reach out to us. We're happy to answer any questions you may have. Um, I also want to make sure I'm dropping in a webinar eval just for CSHA side. So the pre and post test that you've been uh, taking, that was for Stanford, and that's really helpful for them as well. So please make sure you're filling that out. But also for us, uh, for CSHA, if you can help fill, us, uh, fill out this really quick survey, it's only five multiple choice question. It's just to help us put on better webinars for you all um, in the future. So if you could do that, we'd really appreciate it. But otherwise than that, we hope that y'all enjoyed this uh, webinar. Thank you, Carly, and thank you, Scott, for the amazing presentation. It was so informational. I definitely learned a lot. Hopefully our attendees did as well. Um, but that is it on my end. Thank you, everyone, for coming today. And we hope you enjoy the rest of your Tuesday. And recording and slide will be shared out with y'all just Give me a couple of days and it will be shared uh, via email and it will be uploaded on our webpage so for you all to look at if you're interested in. Okay, I'm going to stop screen sharing there. Great. Thank okay. you, Tracy. And then um, I'll stay on for a few more minutes if anyone has any questions. But yeah, otherwise, have a great day. Yes, thank you, everyone. Bye.